to longer reproduction and life cycle. Hello my disciples, today we'll be going over the life cycle and reproduction of the Trelonga species. But before we slide into this freshly looped butthole, I need to sleep something in here real quick. This will probably be the final Trelonga anatomy video, as we've covered pretty much everything. But I might expand on earlier episodes in more detail, like the muscular and skeletal system. But that is not guaranteed, like a redditor having a girlfriend. Anyway, now you can open this nice and wide and get down and dirty with it. Starting with the actual reproductive organs themselves, they're functionally the same as human ones, albeit with a few key differences. Beginning this explanation with the male genitalia. The testicles are internalized, protecting them from physical injury, and they have specialized arterial coils around them to regulate their temperature. The dong is highly elasticated and stored inside the body, said dong expanding outwards when aroused. An accordion-like cartilage system allowing it to compress and expand to the degree that it does. A male's urethra and sperm ducts are separate tubes, the urine coming out above the penis in the crotch area via a small opening and the sperm traveling down the penis. And the male penis is a different shape. Moving on to the female genitals, the vagina stays closed, like it should, even when the legs are spread, keeping the clitoris, labia, etc. safely inside. The vaginal opening has no visible external lips. The urethra is just above the vaginal opening instead of inside it. Trelonga females don't have periods due to how their actual reproduction system works. And the shape of the uterus is different to accommodate birthing the eggs later. With those covered, we can now get into the actual egg development and life cycle. Like how Tyrone gets into your mom's bed every night while dad's passed out at the bar. Also, I'm skipping the actual info on how they get down and dirty because I think that should be obvious if you know what intercourse is. If not, how old are you? 10? Why the fuck are you here? Where are your parents? If your parents are the type to simply leave you on an iPad with YouTube and autoplay instead of getting a babysitter, I'm terribly sorry for you. Anyway, getting right into it, like how the average priest gets into a- Starting at the very beginning, after Sneed has finished getting down with Donkey Kong and putting his seed and feed in the female, the sperm will, after about two days, find their way into the uterus and wait. Once they make their way in, they give a, off a compound which tells the female body to release a clutch of around 30 eggs, beginning the fertilization process. Said eggs taking about 4 days to be ready, which, during this time, the sperm will enter a sort of hibernation, waiting for said eggs. Fast forward 4 days, the eggs get released, causing the sperm to wake up and fertilize them, but only around 1 or 14 of said eggs will actually be viable. Once fertilized, the eggs will attach to the uterus, lining and the female's body will begin to supply them with everything necessary for the later stages of development, causing them to become small but dense and heavy spheres of necessary material, around the size of a golf ball, the whole process taking about 3 months. During this 3 month period, the pregnant female will become violently hungry and borderline insatiable, like a pit bull at a daycare. She'll eat several times her usual diet to sustain herself and the development of the eggs inside. For most of this 3 month time frame, she will do almost nothing but eat, sleep, and defecate when necessary. Towards the end of this time frame, in the final week, when the eggs are nearly ready, they will release a signal compound, causing the female's instincts to activate. She will feel the eggs are coming. Driven by her maternal instincts, much akin to a redditor when it's time to fill their fumo doll with cummies again, she will find a safe place to give birth, often a quiet, dark, warm environment, or in modern times, an incubator. Or in the case of the redditor, it would be a jar and wait for her eggs to be born. The day before birth, the eggs will detach from the uterus lining, and the remaining space inside the uterus will be filled with an oily yellow secretion known as egg wax, which keeps the eggs safe by deterring most predators after birth. The next day, the uterus will contract at regular intervals and the cervix will begin to loosen, pushing the eggs out until the female successfully births all of them like how Nikocado births an entire brick out of his eye of Sauron. This process is painful, but much less so than human birth, as less stretching of the body is required. After all the eggs are discharged from the body, due to the toll it takes, the female will need to rest for a period of time before resuming normal activities. After the eggs are ejected from the body and exposed to the open air, the egg wax covering them will solidify into a stretchy, foul-tasting, rubble-like material, which keeps the clutch of the eggs in place and deters most predators from eating them. This egg wax can be recycled into a special glue after the eggs have hatched, but we will discuss this at some point in time, later. Back on track, a week after the eggs have been laid by the female, they will begin to slowly expand, making space for the fetus inside as it develops, the egg wax around them stretching to accommodate this. This will go on for about 5 years. After around 5 years of development, only one 
to 14 of the eggs will hatch and the newborn Charlanga will emerge from them. They will typically stand around 2 feet tall and will already be able to walk up straight, but not fly as newborn Charlanga lack wings. Also, after the newborns hatch, the mother's maternal instincts, triggered by the newborn smell, will make her body release a hormone, causing her breasts to develop a nipple and glands inside of it. It will start making small gelatinous packs of protein and fat known as feeding packets. The female will produce these marble-sized packets of resources for about six months, which she will push out of her breast by the nipple and give to her younglings to help them stay alive. After six months pass, the breasts stop producing packets, the glands deactivate, and it pushes out any remaining packets, which is about as effortless as Nikokata's gut pushing out another flood of shit when he's sleeping. Then the nipple closes up and vanishes. Anyway, back to the actual life cycle. The wings of a Trilonga take 23 full years to develop after hatching, this process being quite slow until puberty hits at around 14, at which point the wing growth will speed up significantly, and the actual sexual characteristics of the Trilonga will also begin to fully develop. This continues till age 23, when the wings are fully developed and puberty stops, at which point they are now a fully formed adult with functional wings, usable puff glands, working genitalia, and are at their adult size. And that is the Trilonga life cycle. But this is not the end of the video. I still have to go over and clarify a few things. First being why Trilonga has zero interest in same-sex relations. This is for a few reasons. First being a same-sex couple cannot reproduce. Second being, their mouths and anuses are filled with sharp points which would be like trying to fuck a blender, causing serious injury and making safe sex practically impossible outside of giving one another a hand, which isn't enough to maintain a sexually healthy relationship in the long term. And third being, their intestines and mouth are full of bacteria, so if their genitalia got injured, this could easily lead to infection. Moving on to the second leap thing I need to explain, there are no transgenders or non-binaries, and there never have been in a Trilonga species. This is due to a deep-rooted, instinctual understanding of their own bodies, and knowing that it can't be changed. Also, even with the technological and medical advancements their species made, all attempts have failed, as the body would simply just reject the changes in new organs, even if the DNA was modified to perfectly match the patient. Thirdly, the Trilonga instinct to violently protect younglings also starts at 14, when puberty hits them at full force like a drunk and a piece of dad coming back from the bar. Fourthly, the genitalia and puff glands of a Trilonga are non-functional until puberty starts, then they begin to develop. And fifthly, the egg wax I mentioned earlier is often refined into a glue for the parents after the eggs have hatched, and said glue will be used to create something special, often a decorative item made from the eggshells to celebrate the successful hatchings of the eggs. And with that, we have covered the reproduction and life cycle of the Trilonga. As I said at the beginning, this is probably going to be the final episode of the Trilonga biology series, unless I forgot something. So if you enjoyed this series, leave it in the comments, and liking is appreciated. Also, if you're a fan of mine, I have a Discord, linked in the description. Anyway, that's it. Hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.